Excitement in the kitchen. Say, let's see the excitement. All right. Just you come along with me and I'll show it to you. Welcome, folks. You probably know who I am if you're watching this video, and if you don't, I'm Jonathan, uh, otherwise known as the Appliance Dude here at Curto's in Westchester County. I'm coming at you here high atop Mount Appliance in beautiful and bucolic Yonkers, New York, and uh, 20 minutes from Manhattan, 30 minutes from Greenwich, 20 minutes from the GW Bridge, all points converge on Curto's. Um, this is video number two on my Capital Dual Fuel Range cooking video series. And um, what we're gonna do tonight is talk about teamwork. Teamwork between the burners, the open burners on top, and the incredible, incredible oven that is in the Capital Dual Fuel Connoisseurian series. An oven which I believe, I feel, is the best oven in the business. The thing is totally kitted out with so much love. Um, uh, really nobody else brings the goodies to the table that this range does. And I own it, I use it, I can report on it with all honesty and integrity and transparency. So let's hit it. So what I did, I uh, wanted to sear a steak. It was freezing and uh, you know, I have a fleet of grills in my backyard. I've got the Kamado, I've got the Memphis grill, I've got um, an Alfresco DCS, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And what I was gonna, you know, typically a steak, I'm searing it outside. But no, I wanted to really test this oven out because I had told, been told time and time again about how incredible the broiler is when it comes to searing a steak. So what I did is I made a trip to a, I took a trip to my buddy over at Minnie's Prime Meats in Bronxville, New York, and I got an absolutely, who's back the best butcher in Westchester, in my humble opinion, um, got a gorgeously marbled two and a half inch thick ribeye, which you're probably looking at pictures of right now, dressed it up as I normally do, hit a little bit of rosemary in there, um, bathed it in olive oil, nice massage, um, Jake's Grillin' Cowboy Coffee Rub, um, uh, coarse uh, kosher salt, and uh, black pepper. And um, what I did was I took a large skillet and I put it into the oven under the broiler. And the broiler, as you know, you've probably seen in past posts, is absolutely just incomparable in this range. I put it under the broiler, and the incredible thing about the broiler in the Capital, the dual fuel series, is that it's actually a variable temp broiler, so it's not just high-low. You can actually dial in a temperature reading on it, and that's exactly what I did. Um, I wanted to get the cast iron skill to be white hot, so I cranked it, cranked the broiler, took it out. The thing was just, I mean, for, just white hot is actually an understatement. And what I did then is I took the steak, put it into the cast iron skillet, and placed it onto one of the burners in the front of the range, which I didn't crank it. I had it at about medium, probably at about a medium flame, and um, let got a nice caramelization and sear going on. Um, basically, I think it was about a minute and a half to two minutes on either side, you know, I did a flip, then took the skillet with some heavy, heavy ass duty gloves back into the oven under the broiler. And at this point, what I did is, I think I might have dialed the broiler down to about 500 degrees or 475 degrees, because it was just blazing, blazing hot. Put it underneath there, waited about, uh, about another two minutes, flipped the steak again, hit it with two minutes, and you're, you have to understand when you're on the, the, this, this broiler, the sear, the focus of the energy and the heat because of the glass that the capital uses, it's really, it's absolutely incredible. Took the steak out, put it back up top, I had absolute bubbling caramelization, what we call in the barbecue world is bark, okay? That, that beautiful, beautiful process of the caramelization when the sugars actually, they become hardened. And you cut into that and you just, it's kind of hard on the outside, a little bit of grit, and you go in and then you're just getting absolute juicy succulents on the inside. I like my steaks medium rare. I put in my instant read. Yes, yes, I was at the temperature that I was looking for. Okay, about 125, 135 degrees. Um, 
cut into it. It was absolutely fantastic. Now, being high output's wonderful, but you don't actually need to have the burners cranked to get this. I actually, again, had it more in a medium, uh, medium setting. And I hearken back to a customer that I actually just spoke to about an hour ago, Christina, who told me, Jonathan, I don't care. And she's looking at capital. She says, Jonathan, it, the power doesn't matter to me. I'm more interested in control and precision at lower or mid-level temperatures. And, um, and the open burners do afford you that. But in this world, in this universe, we're all chasing high numbers and you know it delivers that, but for what it's worth. Um, so that's it. I am trying to make these videos a little more pithy, a little shorter. Of course, if you want more granular information, you want things deeper, you could always email me or I'll probably write something up on the blog. It goes a little bit further, but we are trying to keep the videos a little on the shorter side now um, and, and stop doing like the Moby Dick 10 minute epics. Um, but folks, the, again, the meat, the, the, the steak, the beef, it came out so beautiful. So I can tell you, you can buy one of these capital ranges. You can sear a steak in it, use cast iron, use it in tandem with your high output burners up top, and you are going to be quite, quite the happy camper. If there are any questions, please, please, please hit me up, Jonathan at Curtos.com, or please come and visit, like some of these folks from New Jersey that have been coming in recently, traveling up to three hours to come visit the appliance dude and his friends here at Curtos. Remember, we are here to serve. Thank you.